Today I'm going to walk you through how I organize all of my tasks, um, especially when I was in graduate school in Notion, so that you can feel less overwhelmed and be more productive because you know exactly what you need to do. And I always feel so much better when I just can see it all out on paper or in Notion and then I can like plan what I need. I'm going to show you how I do this. I do want to let you know that what I'm going to be showing you is a template that I actually have available for purchase if you're interested. The link will be in the description below if you want to purchase this. You can also create this on your own if you know the back end of Notion and want to build this out. Okay, so here is the template and this is just going to be an example one that I'm going to walk through. If you also kind of want to play around with this, I actually have a link below where you can actually go and explore this template as well. Um, if you're interested in it. So here's my example um, Notion template. And you can see that the first thing is I have a calendar here. And this calendar makes it really easy to like see a higher level view of what's going on. And it also makes it really easy because you can just move tasks to different days. Um, so you can just pick it up and move it if you don't want to do it on that day, it's perfectly fine. Up here, I have my daily to-do list. And so on the right-hand side, I have a couple quick things that you can get a high-level view of. So the first one is a daily to-do list. This actually like auto-populates. Um, so you can see this task three is scheduled for today, but if I'm working through my day and I'm like, okay, I can't take that on today, I put on too much on myself, I can just move it to tomorrow, which I do probably more often than I should. Um, and now that goes away. And so if I put it back on today, it's now on today. And tomorrow, it'll show you the tasks that are on the 29th. So that's kind of the task level view. Um, and then there's some project quick links. So I'm going to get into those in a minute to kind of show you what you can do in those. Um, there's your research tasks, coursework tasks, and teaching tasks. So you can categorize all of your tasks. Um, and these actually will go based off the task categorization or the project categorization. So if you actually categorize your projects and you don't also want to categorize your tasks, they'll show up here as well. So this just kind of makes it a little bit easier to see what you need to do under each of these three different things, because that's mainly the things that at least I experienced with working on um, in grad school is research, coursework, and teaching. Okay. So I kind of want to show you how I use this specifically. And to do that, I'm going to go under the project based dashboard. So this allows you to see things from a project view. So what you're going to see is that these are all really, really similar to the task based dashboard, but these are specific for projects instead of tasks. So what I generally like to do is I will actually come under this projects link and when I put in a project, and so as an example, I'm going to add a new project in here and I'm going to say, um, write steroid IMS review, which is one of the things I did and I'm going to put it under research. So now it's categorized. So now what I'm going to do is over here is tasks. I love to break my project down into tasks. So in here, I can just start adding tasks. And these are actually going to add into a separate table. These are two tables are linked together based on this task. So what are things that you have to do when you're trying to write a review? So I'm going to gather uh, literature for steroids. So I can just create that task. I'm going to organize or outline my review. Actually, if you're interested, I'm going to have a whole series on creating a literature review coming in 2022. Um, so outline your review. So here's now a bunch of tasks and I can easily just do that in here. And that's usually probably most of what I'll do within this project. The other thing I will do sometimes is have deadlines or plan dates. So if I know that this is due, in let's go April. So let's say this is due April 2nd. So I always like to have my stuff planned a week before. So if it's due April 2nd, let's say I'm going to do it by the 27th. All right. So then that you can also if you and I'll show you this later, but if you have um, you like to use the Eisenhower matrix, you can do that in here. You can do it somewhere else, too. You can set a priority to this project as well if it's high or low priority um, and the categorization. So this is going to be the project I'm going to work on right now. 
And then we're gonna go back to the task-based dashboard. All right, so we're back here. So you can see nothing's changed here except for my research tasks. Now this is auto-populated with a bunch of research tasks and I can actually come in here and each one of these tasks is now a page. So if I want to write notes on this task, I can easily come in here and write those notes out. So now I have a bunch of tasks that I can see. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to start scheduling these tasks out. So if I go under the schedule tasks, you can see I have a list here of every task that doesn't have a date for me to complete it in, and I have a calendar. This is how I like to schedule my tasks because I can easily just drag and drop over. If you have priorities assigned, I also have the priority over here so that you can see it. So I can kind of just do these in order. So let's say I'm gonna gather literature on the 30th. I'm gonna write my review or I'm gonna outline it. Say I'll give me myself two weeks to gather literature. On the 11th, I'm gonna work on outlining my review. Um, and let's say I wanna do this over multiple days. I can come in here and where it says planned date, I can include end date, and then I can set my end date to the 14th. So now you can see I have outlined my review is for four different days so that I can work on it at different times, and then it will actually show up on my daily to-do list all of those days. So then I'm gonna come back to my task-based dashboard, and now I can see that these things are actually going to show up through here as I'm looking at it. So I can actually track it what I'm doing with all of these things. And you can see the project that it's assigned to as well. So if I'm wondering what my review was or outlining it or what introduction I need to write, I can always see that right below it, uh, what projects it's based on. So that's kind of a general way to just break down big projects into tasks, move them around, and then you have this daily to-do list that you can just auto-populate and you can see what you need to do for the day. This always helps me to kind of be able to relax because then I know I have everything scheduled out and I know what I need to accomplish every day. So if you ever wanna go into the back end of those two tables, so the project tables, you can click there and you're gonna see the back end it as a table. And if you want to go into your task back end, which you can see I rarely ever do, um, here's the task back end. So you can always switch view so i have a bunch of different views here here's the table view so this is where you can see all these things so you can always put in a status here anytime you can always open it or click on it and also change it within here so you can see the status is here you can always check something there you have a priority you can assign to it a type so you can see all of these don't have a type assigned to it but it still showed up under that research in the uh, main dashboard. And that's because it's pulling the project type. Um, so it can pull either type if you're interested in it. The project it's assigned to, it, if you have assigned a priority to that project, it will show up here. And because as you move over, right? So like as you move over to here, you no longer see the task name. So I have the task rewritten out. So if you're wondering what that is, the plan dates that you're gonna work on it, deadlines that you can assign to it, and then you can check whether it's completed or not. So on the main daily to-do list, you're gonna have those check marks you can easily, easily click, and that will actually remove it um, from some of those other places so that you're not seeing all of your past tasks. They'll automatically get removed off of like your main calendar. They don't get removed off your daily to-do list because I like to see what all I accomplished in the day, but they will get removed off your, those lower things that say like research tasks and coursework tasks. So here's your project type. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about the Eisenhower matrix real quick. So coming back to the dashboard, so yeah, so down here, if these get um, completed, they'll actually get removed. So I can actually show you real quick how to add things to any of these lists. So you can come and click these three dots and click properties. So if you want to be able to easily check whether it's completed or not, you can just turn on this completed here. Or if you want to see the priority or the project it's in, you can turn that on as well. So now you can see these things here. You can check it off as completed or you can add the project in here. 
I generally like to see these as a higher level view, but if you, if it works better for you, for you to be able to do these things within it, you can just go into the properties and click them on and off. Your task list, you can see this is already created where you can easily check it on and off. So if I check it on, you can see that it um, stays on my daily to-do list, but it's now been removed from my research task. That way, once you've completed these things, you don't keep seeing all the things you've done before. So the last major thing I wanna show you and something I've added in is actually this Eisenhower matrix. So if you've done a lot of like productivity stuff, you've probably heard of this before, but it's basically ranking things based off their importance and their urgency. So I basically created this within Notion itself. So here you can see the urgency is up top and the importance is along the side. So you have urgent and important is in this grid, not urgent and importance over here, urgent and not importance down here, and not urgent and not importance down here. So what I've done is I've hidden all of the things that aren't a part of this. So what you can easily do is come over here and you're going to see all of these things. So these are gonna be all of your tasks that you haven't assigned to anything within this grid. They don't have an urgent or an importance marker. So what you can easily do is as you're going through this, if you use the Eisenhower matrix to do stuff, you can totally use this in Notion and you can just literally drag it and drop it in. And so this is gonna now assign it to not urgent and important. And so if you use the Eisenhower matrix, you can do that within here. We're gonna say that this is important and urgent. You know, this is important, not urgent. And we're literally just gonna fill this out. Maybe task two is not important, but urgent. And task three is not urgent and not important. So you can keep filling this out. And then if you're like, okay, I know that my not urgent but important needs to be planned. Okay, I'm just gonna drag it down here or you can just use this to do other things. So I can then drag it to here. So once you drag it here, you are going to change that date. So now you can see this was the 29th and I think it was actually originally set for like, so there you go. So this is, this is a way for you to be able to categorize those urgent and important tasks um, within Notion, so you don't have to create the list and then try and do it, um, scheduling your tasks in Notion. And if we go back to the task-based dashboard and go to the project-based dashboard, you're going to see that there's also the Eisenhower matrix for projects. So you're gonna see that nothing really is in here. If I click over here, I'm gonna see this guy. And so let's put this in here. So now you can see your Eisenhower matrix. And if you wanna hide any of this stuff again, that's appearing under the title, you can again just do that by going to in here, going to properties, and let's say we don't need all the tasks to show. We'll leave the type, we'll remove the deadline, leave completed, leave planned, and then we're gonna remove that. So there you go. So now it makes it a little bit simpler to view. So this kind of gives you an initial way to be able to categorize all of your stuff and really make it seem um, kind of simple and seamless. So that's how I organize my tasks in Notion um, so that it's just uh, so much easier and less overwhelming for me to see what do I actually need to accomplish in today and to know that when I'm accomplishing my thing for today that that's gonna make it easier in the long run. So if you're interested in this specific template and you don't want to build it yourself, there is a link down below that you can one, just go in and explore it. You won't be able to move things around like I can, um, but you can just kind of see what the different pages are. So there's a link to be able to do that. There's also a link to be able to purchase the template and duplicate it into your, your own Notion space. The last thing I want to tell you is if you're just starting a research project, and you really wanna get it off the ground in 2022, download my free 30-day research jumpstart guide. It literally walks you step-by-step step on how to start developing a project and getting it off the ground. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.